Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today, self-isolating, staying safe, and all that good luck. Welcome to today's video, which is on Chelsea's 2019-2020 season. It's a season review. Now, of course, the season has not finished. I get it. And it's probably going to finish. I know. But still, I wanted to take this opportunity while you guys, well, while a lot of us are sitting at home watching content on YouTube, to offer my opinion on this situation so far, or the season so far. How have the players performed? How has the team performed as a collective? How has the coach, Frank Lampard, performed? So I'm going to do that. The way I want to do it is I'm going to go through defence, midfield and attack. I'm going to give like a rating out of 10 for each sector of the pitch. The team is a whole. Uh, yeah, I guess the team is a whole, but if that number doesn't add up to the average rating of the defence, midfield and attack, I know people will attack me in the comments. I don't care. And I'll rate Frank Lampard. It's going to be fun. So if you like Chelsea content and you like daily uploads, make sure you do subscribe to Football Therapy because I do upload every single day to offer you guys content to munch on. And also, if you want to help me out, why not like the video? And what's that? I hear you like Chelsea Football Club. Do you want to have your chance to get your hands on a Chelsea FC shirt? You do. You want to do something kind and giving as well? Yes? Why not donate to my NHS fundraiser? There's only a few days left. The link is in the top of the description and it's an opportunity for you there to basically do something good and positive as well as have the chance to win a Chelsea shirt. Just leave your Twitter handle in the donation message and I'll pick someone at random at the end of the campaign in a few days and send you a Chelsea shirt. Very nice. Right then, let's get on with it. Chelsea season, ups and downs. Really good start, really positive moments, as things stand, are in the top four. Now remember, a lot of people, I think the average position for Chelsea, given by the bookmakers pre-season, was sixth place. Of course, having a transfer ban, having an inexperienced coach, and losing 50% of the Premier League goal contributions from last year in Eden Hazard. Indeed, Frank Lampard was hamstrung coming into the job this campaign. A victim of his own success early doors, Frank Lampard started incredibly well before he had his dip, so people perhaps judged him more harshly than they should have done later down in the season when Chelsea was struggling, but they did struggle a lot against poor teams, and we're going to get into that in a moment. Of course, there were loads and loads of highs though this season, doing the double over Jose Mourinho. I think Frank Lampard's the first manager to ever do the double over Jose Mourinho, which is mental, and it makes it better that it's Tottenham Hotspur, Chelsea's most bitter rivals. Of course, they took um, four points from Arsenal as well, which is a big, big positive. Knocks the European champions Liverpool out of the FA Cup, up comprehensively with a 2-0 win and of course qualified out of the Champions League group stage at the expense of last season's semi-finalist Ajax in a couple of absolute ding-dongs against them by the way four all superb scenes an amazing away performance defensively as well in a 1-0 which was rare for Chelsea this season and just loads of other good positive moments throughout the season as well. Chelsea obviously beating Everton 4-0 last game, you know, scoring five past Wolves away, which is no small feat. Tammy Abraham being the youngest Chelsea player to get a hat-trick until Christian Pulisic did it a few weeks later. A perfect hat-trick away at Turf Moor. Hard place to go. Loads of these really feel-good stories uh, throughout the season. Frank Lampard giving 8,000 academy debuts. <laughs> Loads of good gear. So let's talk about the collective then. Let's talk about the defence as a whole. Now, I did mention Chelsea did have a really good defensive performance away against Ajax, but there has been a few and far between. And that's not necessarily because of defensive personnel per se, although there have been a lot of individual errors throughout the season. There's been no players that have been awful all season. It's just perhaps been a collective chemistry thing, a lack of leadership, some poor defensive coaching from the management and I guess some like I said individual mistakes as well and to be honest even though you know Tamori might have been good at times scored a rocket Zuma and Rudiger had their moments Christensen found some form none of them cover themselves in glory this season and although this is going to sound a little bit harsh you build positive results in seasons off defences. And, and in these games where Chelsea lost 1-0 to inferior opposition, you know, those extra single points would be really valuable right now. I'm going to give the defence a 
four. Now that sounds really, really harsh and it's not because I'm critiquing the individuals in terms of their ability. In terms of Chelsea playing without the ball uh, this season, they haven't been great. In the earliest stages of the season, Chelsea were awful in transition. Granted, that got better with time and with coaching, but the opening three, four months, maybe three months, Chelsea were awful in transition and were just conceding counter-attack goals over and over. Even though they aren't that out, I have to look at the season as a whole and the defence for me gets a four. Let's talk about the midfield. Loads of excellent midfielders at Chelsea. Now, Kovacic, arguably Chelsea's player of the season. Jorginho was getting high, high praise early doors. Are playing under Frank Lampard, looks very good indeed, looked quite creative. Mason Mount has been a really positive story as well. Incredibly good pressing midfielder, quite attacking. You know, Kante's been out injured most of the time, granted. Barkley's had a few excellent performances, a few under Frank Lampard. Now, Frank Lampard was one of the best midfielders of all time, arguably the best Premier League midfielder, certainly offensive central midfielder of all time. So you'd imagine the midfield's going to be very, very good. And it was. It was good in terms of creativity, strength, movement, and, you know, the likes of Billy Gilmore coming through has been a revelation as well. Although, you know what? Because I, I do, <laughs> there is a problem at Chelsea in finishing chances, which we're about to get to, and also creating clear cut chances. But in terms of transitional from defense to attack and moving the ball in midfield, it's pretty darn good. The only thing it's really lacking is a midfielder to score goals from like 30 yards out. And if Chelsea had that, they'd get like a 9.5 or something and it would be up to the forwards to finish off chances. But in terms of dribbling out of the press, pressing from the middle, combining, etc., etc., I'm going to give Chelsea's midfield. I want to give it an 8, but I'm going to give it a 7. Like I said, if there's a few more long-range goals in there, it'd probably be an 8, 9, something like that. But it's going to get a 7 for now. Let's move on to the attack. Chelsea creates so, so, so many chances in the Premier League this season. They're just not finishing off the chances. Uh, you could argue that they're not completely clear-cut, but they have enjoy so much possession around, sometimes with the six-yard box as well, they don't convert chances. Tammy Abraham has done pretty well. Um, in, even though he's missed a lot of chances, he scored a bunch of goals. Um, Pulisic's done well when he's come in, but really, you know, Willian's not a proper free-flowing goal-scoring winger, and you know, Hudson Odoi struggled to find form, but he's come off that big injury. So I'm reluctant to like really dig anyone out, but collectively, there's been a failure when you've got the ball you know, most of the game and the, the forwards are passing it around the opposition area and you can't convert, you've got a problem. Chelsea have scored goals. Okay, but not enough. The thing is, you know, again, I don't want to dig out individuals too much because it is a lack of personnel. And if it's a lack of personnel to a degree, you can't necessarily dig them out too much. I'm going to give the forwards a six. Now, I feel like it's a little bit generous because Chelsea should be scoring loads of goals. But the fact is, when you've got like Pulisic scoring perfect hat-tricks, Tammy Abraham scoring the odd hat-trick, um, you know, players doing okay, Chelsea converted any anywhere near what they're supposed to be in terms of expected goals it would be an eight it's not an eight it's a six right then this is my rule so i can do what i want in this video sure you might say the collective rating of the defense midfield and attack should be like 5.5 or something but i'm going to add in some other stuff for the sake of it because i can i'm going to give the whole chelsea team a rating of seven because i'm going to like put in team spirit playing for the badge for all these kids from the academy that hail from the blue blood of Cobham. The, you know, the sense of understanding how important the games against Tottenham are, you know, rising to the occasion because these kids know what it means to be Chelsea. Away at Ajax, putting in that performance, digging in for the coach and the fans. All of these sort of intangibles that sort of a bit more of the sort of romanticism and the feel-good factor of the club. Even though the average should be lower, I do want to give Chelsea as a squad a 7 this season because in many ways they have still overperformed. Right, let's talk about Frank Lampard now. How do you rate a coach who's only like been in management for less than two years? You know, a matter of months, really. Do you take that into account saying, well, he's just started, so you're rating him on the fact how he's a new coach, or are you rating him on the fact how he's a Chelsea coach regardless? Or are you intertwining the two? Maybe I'm gonna take everything into account. Okay, so Frank Lampard, very, very intelligent, very good with the media, very good uh, player manager. He did quite well with uh, Pulisic taking him out and bringing him back in and then Pulisic doing really well. 
he did quite well to drop Kepa apparently. Everyone knew Kepa had to be dropped if you looked at his numbers. He dropped him, he made more than just a point, he dropped him for a few games, brought him back in, Kepa was very very good. So you're kind of thinking, well he's done the exact thing he should have done with Kepa, managerial masterclass? Obviously he did very well to change formations against Mourinho, uh, he did really really well against Liverpool, champions of Europe, all three times when they've played Liverpool. Arguably they should have won two of the three, all three times they've put in an excellent performance and you know Jur Jurgen Klopp would be the first to admit that. But Chelsea can't break lower league opposition defensive blocks down and this has been a recurring theme. How different Chelsea's season would be if they just won say three of those games that they lost that they were absolutely supposed to win. I know this is like a what about or what ifs and all that, but Chelsea would be in such a strong commanding position up there, you know, closer to Man City even, and it would be like an absolute mega success of a season. So very frustrating, but perhaps it's sort of teething issues, learning curves for the manager as well as a young squad. Uh, I think, like I said, a lot of people expected Frank Lampard to just finish up a mid-table free hit of a season, learn the squad, learn the players, and he's done so much better than that. Frank Lampard, for me, uh... Because, because he has given so many debuts, he's testing the wars from all the academy players because he knows next season he gets to sign people, so he needs to try as many as possible, see you can really fill, fill in between the gaps. I'm going to give Frank Lampard an 8 this season. Now that seems really, really generous, and maybe it is, but I'm giving him an 8 on the premise of he's not dogmatic, he accepts his mistakes, he throws his hands up that he's learning, and with that you can't ask for any more, really. Chelsea hopefully will evolve and he will justify the 8 rating that I've given him but in terms of playing the, you know, the youth, in terms of trying to entertain the fans, in terms of always standing up after losses and admitting his mistakes, it's all pretty immaculate from the Chelsea coach so he gets an 8 from me. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want to hear your ratings down in the comment section below so get down there, express yourselves and let me know what you think of the defence midfield attack and coach. If you've enjoyed the content please do like the video, it helps me out a lot. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick. You lot enjoy the football that's not happening at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.